Our dental health. We see to it on a normal basis. Visits to the dentist's office twice a year and good oral hygiene. But in spite of all our efforts, serious problems may still arise. One of the most frequent problems is the receding of the gums, in other words, a progressive detachment of the tooth from the gingiva. The standard treatment consists of surgical procedures, but tonight we will talk to you about a different approach to this disease, which attacks the main source of the disease, microorganisms, the identity of which are not commonly agreed upon. An ecosystem, organisms living, relying upon one another, and sharing the same environment. Here is another one. This one is microscopic. It is formed of millions of bacteria of all kinds, amoebas, fungi, and even viruses. This ecosystem is the one of a mouth, mine, yours, everyone's mouth flora. In this jitterbug waltz, there are the good ones and sometimes the bad ones. Let's hear an expert's opinion about this. Normal flora is very important because microorganisms, which may be regarded as beneficial, are eliminated from our mouth cavity. The resulting problem, environmental bacteria, will penetrate the oral cavity and certain bacteria, possibly pathogenic, will invade the tooth surface, the gingival sulcus, and these bacteria will then likely cause infections. Daniel Grenier, a microbiologist at Laval University's research group in oral ecology. His passion? Bacteria of our mouth. According to him, even our own mouth flora contains bad bacteria causing mouth disease. These bacteria appear when our mouth flora is out of balance. The reason for this lack of balance, poor mouth hygiene and immune system deficiency, or for example, when we take antibiotics which attack the good bacteria of our mouth flora. When such is the case, periodontal diseases, those of the gums, appear. They are very widespread. They attack 60% of the population. The tooth is a prey of choice for bad bacteria. There are those which cause cavities, but there are numerous others which attack the gingiva. First, a plaque is formed on the tooth. Then, these bacteria attack the gums and cause redness and inflammation. It's gingivitis. If we do not intervene, the situation runs the risk of deterioration. Therefore, these bacteria, living without oxygen, penetrate under the gums and form a pocket of infection. As a result, bacteria attack the tooth, the bone, and the gingiva at the same time. The gums will gradually recede. This is periodontitis. Finding the culprit is not an easy task. We begin by drawing a dental plaque sample that we mix with a drop of water. It's extremely difficult as far as I'm concerned. If I were asked to identify pathogenic bacteria from a dental plaque sample test, I'd be totally incapable. These bacteria all look the same. To find the culprit, we must run biochemical tests to identify the genetic codes. In all periodontal disease cases, we find numerous bacteria. One in particular, Porphyromonas gingivalis, freeze substances causing the disease. This, at least, is the researcher's explanation. Then, the microscopic examination will be done. A clinical researcher, the dentist, Mac Bonaire, does not share this opinion. He does not believe that this bacteria is the cause of periodontitis. When a patient such as Rosa Galigo arrives with a gum inflammation, Dr. Bonnet also starts by drawing a dental plaque sample. 
What Dr. Banaya looks for and finds in all cases are not bacteria, but rather a parasite, an amoeba, the entamoeba gingivalis. This amoeba is in fact a big parasite. According to Dr. Banaya, there is no doubt that the cause of periodontal disease is this amoeba and not bacteria. The parasites are always the common factor. They are always present and the problem that I have is that as soon as I get rid of these parasites, the periodontal disease disappears. In all cases, there is no exception. Dr. Banaya is inspired by the work of dentist Trevor Lyons from Ottawa. For 20 years, this researcher believed that by eliminating the amoeba entamoeba gingivalis, a patient could be healed from his periodontitis. To do so, a progressive treatment. First, the patient brushes his teeth with a hydrogen peroxide solution. He then applies a powder base of sodium bicarbonate to his gums, Torrance powder. When the patient has done this regularly within a month period, he realizes that the bleedings have considerably gone down. He has better breath, etc. And then we proceed with the second phase of the treatment, which will require a more sophisticated or elaborate medication. We then apply an antibiotic cream directly to the gingiva, afflicted with periodontitis. If this step is not effective, the dentist will then prescribe a conventional antibiotic treatment. After a treatment of a couple of months, Rosa Galigo, along with the majority of patients treated by Dr. Banay, have recovered healthy gums. The treatment works. So, who should we believe? The dentist claiming that the culprit is the amoeba, this parasite? or the microbiologists who pinpoint the bacteria? It is a difficult question to answer because the antibiotic treatment attacks both the bacteria and the amoebas. Both are eliminated. When we examine the proportions that this amoeba represents in a periodontal pocket, we talk about minute quantities. Then, on the other hand, we have bacteria possessing virulence factors which have been, in fact, associated because they are found mainly in all periodontal cases. By the means of a very simple procedure, it is shown to be absolutely false and debatable at all times. Dr. Bonnell's practice consists of using saliva to examine plaque samples whereas the microbiologists at Laval's research group in oral ecology use water, which, as a result, eliminates the amoebas. For Dr. Banaya, the treatment objective is to avoid gum transplant and ultimately the loss of the tooth that we today replace with implants. His medical approach has the advantage of reducing surgery costs but presents the disadvantage of using antibiotics, which, in the long run, render the mouth flora resistant. The present scientific information does not prove that it's the amoeba that causes the periodontal disease. But how can you prove that these parasites are the cause of all the damage done to both the gums and the tooth? Do we know what it is at the biochemical level? This is something I leave up to researchers. This is something I leave up to academics. They do not conduct any research at this level. They're still focusing on bacteria. The best all-around solution would be the use of an antibiotic which would attack only the responsible bacteria. Dr. Daniel Grenier holds patents for molecules which may prevent bacterial action, but he is far from finding a new remedy. The debate concerning periodontal causes shows that medical research and dentistry have a long way to go before reaching the same conclusions. In the meantime, the research follows its course and science itself has begun to explore the complex universe of our mouth flora. Hello, 
I am Dr. Marc Bonnet. In order to give a better perspective of gum disease phenomena, here are images taken through a contrast phase microscope magnified a thousand times to demonstrate certain related cases. First of all, let's examine the gingival sulcus dental plaque of a healthy 12-year-old child. Notice the low activity rate, the presence of ordinary bacteria, epithelial cells, small coccoid bacteria, Very thin, more epithelial cells, long, motionless filaments. Now, this is what we generally find in adults whose gums do not show any bleeding or deterioration of their gums. Notice also the presence of hull-shaped bacteria, rods or filaments, generally not very mobile. Occasionally notice the presence of epithelial cells with their nucleus, and the absence of white cells which are associated with the inflammatory process. Long filaments with coccoids, some fusiform bacteria, Epithelial cells, in other words, low activity rate and absence of white cells. We will now focus on a patient suffering from adult periodontal disease. Clinically, the redness of the gums is generalized. There is loss of a gingival attachment with five to six millimeter crevices. Note the mobile bacteria, the presence of spirochets, the vibrios, and particularly observe the proliferation of polymorphonuclear neutrophils. These white cells of the infection with small granules dance inside the cells. This indicates infectious manifestations, also the presence of the amoeba, intamoeba gingivalis, this parasite which is present in the majority of periodontal infection types. Isn't it obvious that there is a suspicious presence or at least disturbing, especially when other parasites of the same family cause diseases such as the intestinal amoebiasis, which is treated successfully by our colleagues using short-term antibiotic therapy. The further along we go with the deterioration and the importance of the periodontal disease, we find more aggressive cases such as the rapid progression periodontitis which is described by the following. Once again, using the patient's saliva as a medium and by drawing a sample from the afflicted area, we find extremely large quantities of neutrophil circulating at the bottom of the crevice and primarily parasites such as the entamoeba gingivalis. It slips itself through epithelial cells. Notice the pseudopodia ability to slide between each cell. Now, 
I would be more tempted to talk about infestation or parasite nests. They are all parasites and also neutrophils. How can this situation be tolerated without anything being done and recognizing a certain pathogenic potential of the amoeba? It would be totally inconceivable to accept this in my own mouth and more so if I'm suffering from gum disease. Factors in favor of the pathogenic potential are obvious. Major presence of parasites in all forms of gum disease, absence of the same parasite in health. Of the parasites phagocyte and nourish themselves on the white cells of our immune system. They have the ability to move, adhere, and mobilize the leukocytes. Notice the large numbers. Now, this is the situation of a pregnant patient suffering from pregnancy gingivitis. Notice the significant presence of the amoeba and neutrophils. Watch mainly the parasites' capacity to nourish themselves from neutrophil nucleuses, which should nonetheless protect us from these aggressions. The situation seems to be turning against us. I will let you observe. 